intuitive Samba. So we're up in the Victorian high country at Timberline Self-Guided Samba Hunts. It's a um, bow hunting only property. Yeah, so we're up here for about a week or so. Hopefully less if we can get something. Never shot a Samba. Um, seen a few over the time, but um, yeah, never been lucky enough to get one. But this area holds pretty good numbers. Um, it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time, I suppose. But it's bloody cold. It makes for a change. Two weeks ago I was up in Cape York, sweating my backside off. and at the moment down here freezing my ass off so been bucketing down rain yeah, it's just these up now very overcast and so forth so hopefully it clears up for the next for the morning and we can um, yeah get out and try and find something First day, first honk. At least I know there's Samba up here. I'm actually trying to make my way up into this gully over here. Where I think there's a bit of a wallow and there was a few rubs in that last time. But yeah, just making my way up through this stuff. And um, yeah, just got honked just to the left of me. Oh well, shit happens. With Samba, I suppose you expect to get honked a lot more than what you probably actually see Samba themselves, so we'll just keep pushing on. That was just a little afternoon walk. Um, I got honked once back behind me by a, um, a Samba. I didn't see it, but yeah, yeah, just got the honk. And then um, up to my left, just up in the gully up there, there's a, a wallow that I checked out, but not really any activity up there at all. So I'll head back to camp, which is just down, down out over there. I go for a sit just down in a little water hole that I am. Um, I know there's a wallow down there as well, so it's not far down the road. Save me walking and then save some energy for tomorrow morning. Morning, folks. It's about two degrees, a bit after four o'clock in the morning. And um, I'm just walking, and it's about a kilometre or so into the blind. We might even get honked in the dark. So, we'll see what happens this morning, if we see anything. I went to the wrong blind this morning. Um, yeah, I entered the wrong blind into my GPS and ended up going to the wrong one. As it was, there was a couple of honks, and I could hear some crunches down in the bush, but... I couldn't see a damn thing, apart from being dark and with all the fog, so I was going to work my way back along the fence line. The breeze is sort of in my face that way, and then um, we'll see what happens. Gunshot, which was um, yeah over sort of the next ridge, and then I heard a few honks that were down further way down in the gully, 
but I don't think, well I mean, I'm, the wind was swirling around so it may have been, it may have got wind of me possibly, I'm not sure. I heard a few honks down in the gully just before as well, so I'm not sure if the wind swirling around may have, um, yeah, may have pushed my scent down to, to it or not. So we have a 45 minute walk back to the car, and um, luckily Michelle's back at camp, she'll have, she's getting tea and everything ready. By the time we get back to camp, get tea, have a quick shower, it'll be bedtime pretty much, and then we'll um, do it all again tomorrow morning. Get up at about four o'clock and trek in over this way and sit, um, yeah, sit again. So, now well, the joys of sambo hunting. Just coming down off this ridge that I um, come up this morning. Got up here at about quarter to five or something like that, and waited till daylight. Unfortunately, the um, it's been a full moon most of the time we've been here, so I don't think that's helping the situation. It's virtually riding off the mornings. I think it's like a big spotlight just shining on me this morning. But um, yeah, come up this sort of small gully up onto the ridge in hope that um, the Samba would be coming across from the fields just to the left. I got honked by three separate Samba and barked at by a fellow. Um, and that was before I even got to the top of the ridge. So it was pretty much all over before I started, unfortunately. But a bit frustrating, but I guess that goes with the territory of Samba hunting. Hopefully over the next couple of days I see a uh, deaf, dumb and blind one and might get half a chance. circled around and and yeah come into about oh, about 30 35 I reckon the arrow stuck in the tree arrow went through it and stuck into the tree I'm hoping that I went far enough and caught the lungs oh, get on my shit and then we'll have a look this is where I was kneeling down <coughs> See my arrow. There is in the tree there anyway, I think. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. Look at this shit. That's what you want to see. Covered in blood. Let's hope it is oh, it didn't go too far. Run up over there. Starting to get that sick feeling in my guts when you um, potentially lose an animal. There's blood all over the arrow. This is the last spot I saw it up on this little peak here, but I can't see anything. I'll have to go back to the arrow and see if there's any blood or anything like that. I couldn't see any before, but I'd have to go millimeter by millimeter and 
and try and see what the hell's going on because it just doesn't make any sense. I've just come back and got my arrow out of the tree. There was blood sprayed up on the little bush that was next to the tree where the arrow had gone through, but literally like one drop where it was standing and that's it, nothing. I mean, I've never had that before, with a, especially with a three blade. I've had it with two blades before where the wound just closes over and they, they bleed out internally, but no, even if I've gone a bit far f um, further back and like taken gut or something like that, there'd still be some sort of trail of blood, I would think. Um, but it's just, I mean, the arrow's got plenty of blood on it. So, I'm stuffed if I know. I'm certainly not going to give up. I've got about an hour of light left. So, I'm going to pop over this ridge again and see. I'm going to go just work my way backwards and forwards around and see what I can come up with. It just doesn't make any sense. Holy shit, I found it. It must have doubled back somehow. It's just down there. Huh. It's, um, yeah, it's gone up, and the last I saw of it, it was heading up the ridge. It must have circled back around. That's fucking awesome. Unbelievable. Oh, that's the exit wound. It's gone in at the point of the shoulder and come out. I didn't think it'd go too far, but it's unbelievable. A little bit of blood there. Oh yeah, there's blood up here as well. I said from the start that it didn't worry me if it was big, small or otherwise, it's still going to be meat on the table and never shot a Samba. I th to do it spot and stalk, which I thought was impossible, just proved that, yeah, it, it can be done. It's friggin' unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is the small little Samba that I just shot close to an hour ago. Um, spotted it at about 90 odd metres. It was, um, I don't know whether it heard me coming into a gully, I was going to go down and sit in a, a blind, which is just down here. Um, yeah, and wait till dark, because the wind's perfect. So it may have heard me coming in down the top of the gully, but so when I spotted it, it was standing up. Um, just at the base of this tree, and then it um, decided to bed back down, which was good. So I dropped all my gear and made the stalk in. It took me about an hour or so um, to get to about 35 metres to start with, 40 metres. Um, and kangaroo bounced through, there was heaps of roo so I had to take it really really slow um, but yeah this kangaroo jumped through and spooked it and it went out to about 60 and then decided to sort of mosey back around and come back in where it felt comfortable and yeah as it sort of come back into towards the tree where it was I nailed it um, yeah slightly quartering on so it's gone in point of the shoulder here and then come out <coughs> um, yeah back here I didn't think it'd go far but yeah there was literally no blood at all it was it was bizarre and um, I went through the roller coaster of emotions with all the, the highs and lows as we do as bow hunters sometimes thinking that you may have missed the shot, like you may have stuffed the shot up or yeah, it wasn't as good a hit as you thought or you, know, you may have lost the animal or something but I, um, yeah, I, I walked about hundreds of metres down this other gully over here because the last I saw of it was, it was heading up here, um, yeah face it going that way. Um, but then, yeah, I went back to retrieve my arrow. Um, I thought, oh, for the sake of it, I can't see that it would have doubled back. But yeah, it was just laying down here on the grass. Um, so really, from where it where it got shot, it may have gone maybe 100 metres or so. Um, yeah, so no, bloody wrapped, bloody wrapped. And as I said, I I didn't care what size it was. It's meat in the freezer, and it's a samba. That's just incredible. I shot it with one of the Widowmaker 100 grain solids. They get it done, so definitely give them a look. If you're after a good bow hunting property for Samba, look Timberline self-guided bow hunts up because, yeah, there is a lot of deer up in this area. And he's got it set up really well. If anyone's interested in, um, yeah, in doing a hunt like this, I'll put the contact details up at the end of the video, or you can get in contact with us at Urban to Outland, and, um, yeah, we'll steer you in the right direction. But, yeah, bloody stoked. This is awesome.